What does it take for the things you love, let's say your cell phone, to go from its point of origin to finally residing in your pocket? It requires a boatload of, well, ships. While we all benefit from the current status of the global supply chain, it is a dirty and complicated mess. But could all of that change with the birth of a brand new, all electric, all autonomous cargo ship? One company, Norway's Konsberg Maritime, is willing to test the waters to find out. Could electric, autonomous ships provide an avenue for not only reducing emissions, but also solving some of the biggest issues facing today's shipping industry? Come sail away with us as we explore these questions and more today on 2-Bit Divinity. Special thanks to Hone Health for sponsoring this video. Find out how you can fight back against Father Time with Hone Health. The current status of global shipping can be summed up in two words, dirty and complicated. Maritime transport accounts for roughly 940 million metric tons of carbon dioxide every year, making up to about 2.5% of global greenhouse gas emissions. And these numbers, they're only expected to grow anywhere from 50 to 250% by 2050 without major intervention, according to the European Commission. But the impact goes well beyond CO2, oil spills, water, and air pollution, not to mention the impact on marine life. Researchers have discovered that the noise produced by marine vessels causes chronic stress and a slew of other health problems for whales and other sea life. A new fully electric, fully autonomous ship out of Norway could kickstart a revolution in shipping and the global economy. The ship, the Yara Birkeland, will be the first fully electric, fully autonomous ship. First imagined in 2017, the vessel was created by the tech firm Konsberg Maritime and shipbuilder Vard. The ship has a deadweight capacity of 3,200 metric tons and a cargo capacity of 120 TEU. That's the number of 20-foot containers it can carry. This is rather on the small side but it's a starting point nonetheless. Equipped with a seven megawatt hour battery with about 1000 times the capacity of an electric car, the ship can reach service speeds of six knots and max speeds of 13 knots or between seven and 15 miles per hour, which is about average for a bulk carrier. While the ship does not carry the title of the first fully autonomous ship, that goes to a ferry launched in Finland back in 2018, it will be the first fully electric container ship in the world and that's bound to make a pretty big splash. The initial voyages will include human crew to handle loading and unloading, but the ship will handle moving, discharging, mooring operations, and all other functions autonomously. Still, the ship will always be monitored remotely by three separate data control centers to ensure safe travels and operation. The ship will travel 12 nautical miles between three ports in Southern Norway, an area that currently carries the majority of the Norwegian Coastal Administration's ship traffic. The major headline is that this ship produces zero carbon emissions on its own. The only source of carbon will likely come from recharging using Norway's current infrastructure, which is generated mostly by hydroelectric power and is one of the cleanest grids in the world. Electric ships such as the Yara will not only reduce the impact of shipping vessels, but it will also help move freight away from the roads and toward the sea. The ship's engineers estimate that just this one ship could replace 40,000 diesel-powered truck journeys annually. While shipping makes up between 2 and 3% of global emissions, medium to heavy-duty trucks contribute somewhere between 8 and 10% of global emissions. Electric vessels would also essentially eliminate the threat of oil spills and other water pollution. And whales? Well, research suggests that the quieter electric motors could help alleviate the issue of noise-related whale stress significantly. If just one electric ship could have this big an impact, imagine what a whole fleet could do. But benefits don't stop there. Having a ship be not only fully electric, but also fully autonomous could open up a whole new world for maritime commerce. Before we get back to the show, let me tell you about our sponsor this week, Hone Health. I was just reading an article about how better posture can actually increase testosterone and lower the levels of the stress hormone cortisol. Look, I'm getting older and it's starting to show. It's getting harder to lose weight and stay in shape, but testosterone actually affects much more than just the physical stuff. It can affect focus. I taught myself software at 25 and 12 years later, it changed my life and made being a YouTuber possible. 
Now at 37, married with two kids, my focus probably isn't what it used to be. In fact, our father's generation actually had 25% higher testosterone levels than we do. If you're often feeling tired or unable to concentrate, your testosterone levels may be to blame, along with over 30 million other men in the US. Hone Health helps men get testing and treatment for low testosterone at home. I'm not a doctor and this is not medical advice, but the entire process is really easy. You collect your sample and mail it back to the lab. Once the results are ready, you video chat with a real doctor who recommends a personalized treatment plan of FDA approved medications delivered straight to your door. For the men or men in your life, order Hone's easy to use home assessment today and learn more about your testosterone levels. For a limited time only, listeners get the at-home assessment and a doctor consultation for only $45. Click the link in the description or go to honehealth.com slash Vinci to take advantage now. Huge thanks to Hone Health and all of you for making this show possible. Autonomous ships hold the potential to be significantly safer than human-operated vessels. According to a report published by Alliance, a Munich-based insurance company, between 75 and 96% of marine incidents and accidents result from human error, typically due to worker fatigue. Remotely controlled autonomous ships could significantly reduce the risk of damage to vessels and cargo, and most importantly, eliminate the risk of injury or death. No crew could also mean overhauling the entire design of these vessels to allow them to carry more cargo while also increasing their travel efficiency. Not having to work accommodations and accompanying life support systems for a crew into the design. But possibly the biggest win of fully autonomous ships relates to the convoluted and frankly decaying arena of the global supply chain. Today, roughly 90% of the world's goods are transported by sea. Over recent decades, marine labor has seen a steady decline, while demand has continually increased. The current worldwide population of seafarers currently serving on international trading vessels is just over 1.6 million. Global demand, however, is currently right around 1.5 million and growing. Experts expect the demand to begin outpacing worker availability in the near future. The global shipping supply chain is a very intricate, sensitive beast where one small hiccup could have catastrophic results. Remember this ship driver's bad day back in March of 2021 that blocked the Suez Canal and ended up costing roughly $400 million an hour for a total of six days and seven hours? Yeah, you do the math. The global shipping industry was already working at near full capacity. And then, well, we all know what happened. The COVID pandemic of 2019. 2020? 2021? Was it one year? Was it 50? Is it still happening when you're watching this video? Anyway, the pandemic served to exacerbate long-standing issues with the global supply chain, due in large part to the way it impacted the already tight labor market. Having fully autonomous vessels that can handle every aspect of the industry without any human intervention could be an absolute game changer. You could have ships running at every given time all year round, unaffected by the labor market or even a global pandemic. After all, robots don't need sick days. Well, unless they're running windows and catch fires. Sorry. So, will Norway's quieter, safer, cleaner, cheaper electric robo ships inspire other companies to build their own emissions free AI armadas? Maybe. But before we see more proliferation of these ships, experts see a handful of limitations that companies like Kongsberg will need to address. For one thing, for these ships to navigate successfully in large ports, will likely need to see bigger improvements to their AI. Rudy Negenborn, a maritime and transport technology professor at the Delft University of Technology in the Netherlands, says that while he believes full autonomous ships are indeed the future, they'll need improved navigation systems. At some point, these ships will have to start interacting with each other so they can exchange information and create paths that are not conflicting, he says. He also added that without crews, these ships will need flawless onboard self-diagnosing systems with the capacity to not only detect, but fix any problems that may arise. There are also concerns over international maritime regulations. Questions remain about whether these ships could operate globally and who would carry legal liability in the event of an accident. And while these ships boast increased safety for humans, they do still carry the risk of piracy, both in forms of high-tech hacking as well as good old-fashioned analog pirating. On a more practical level, before these ships will be ready for their high seas adventures, they'll need to see major improvements in their overall capacity. 
Right now, vessels such as the Yara Birkeland can travel up to 80 kilometers on a single charge. The largest fully electric passenger vessel, the Ellen Ferry Operating in Denmark, can undergo a round trip of 22 nautical miles. It's not as if Elon Musk can build fast charging ports in the middle of the ocean, although who knows? Hybrid solutions have been investigated, where a ship would use diesel generators on board, though this would increase carbon emissions significantly and kind of ruin the whole point of an electric vessel. Won't someone please think about the poor whales? Without the need for observation decks or other bits for us fleshy humans, we could even cover these boats in solar panels. We might need some space for antennas and satellites for communication, but otherwise, they could be blanketed bow to stern in solar. This would mean that these ships could charge as they travel. Theoretically, if they traveled at a slow enough speed, they could travel purely on sunlight. Just like with electric vehicles, where companies like Tesla have taken aerodynamics to an extreme level of efficiency, the same thing will happen with ships. If ships become electric, turbulence in the water and hydrodynamics will become a major factor. And if battery density isn't quite there yet today, might automated cargo ships finally be the use case that propels hydrogen into the spotlight? Hydrogen is super gravimetrically energy dense, and its packaging challenges and lower volumetric energy density might be easier to design around in the larger scale of a shipping vessel. There's also the issue of deadweight tonnage capacity. China's first fully electric ship, the Yangang Electric No. 1, can travel 80 kilometers and carry 2,200 tons of cargo. Most large cargo ships carry about 100 times that much cargo. Still, market research forecasts electric ships and autonomous ships seeing a compound annual growth rate of 14.9% and 10% respectively from 2021 to 2030. As Yara Birkeland prepares to make its inaugural voyage before the end of 2021, we could be seeing these seminal steps into a whole new world of global shipping. But let us know what you think. Are you excited to see such technology revolutions take over the shipping industry? Do you see any risk of having fully autonomous ships sailing in the seven seas? Let us know in the comments below. All right, so that is a look at the future of autonomous electric shipping vessels. I think we've still got some ways to go, especially with energy density. Or might this finally be hydrogen's time to shine? All right, that is a look. Uh, no, not that. Sorry. So a huge... <laughs> <laughs> A huge thanks to all of you guys for watching. And if you want to be a rock star supporter of the show, consider joining our tribe, our YouTube channel members, or our patrons on Patreon. Come join us on Discord, chat about scripts, help us proofread or pick topics, and just chat with people like-minded. That would be a huge support and we would really appreciate it. Also, take a look around. We have a ton of videos we think you're going to love. And just remember, I'm Rick YouTube Da Vinci, and the future is going to be awesome.